Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about jigging. Um, jigging is what allows you to bypass the one per customer guidelines that most retail sites have set. Um, you can use a jig for the address or for a name. Um, different sites have different requirements. Um, the easiest way to do the jigging, of course, is AYCD. So in order to get started with that, you'll have to go into the profile converter module and you'll have to set up a profile. I usually set up a group of base profiles and these base profiles are all the addresses that I can receive mail at. Once you have a base profile set up, you can go ahead and click on the one that you want to jig and then click on the edit button and mass edit and jig your selected one. Um, once all this um, screen pops up, you'll notice there's all the radio buttons, um, name, email, phone, address. Now, as you click them, you'll notice that this is your profile. So when you are jigging, you want to make sure that this is not selected because you want to be able to jig multiple times you're not wanting to just jig the selected singular profile. So we'll say at the end of this, I want this to be a thousand jigs for my address. Um, one of the first things you can do is name your jigs. So we'll say test. And one of the first things that you'll notice is we're going to use an expression. Um, an expression is just a shortcut that makes AYCD work harder and faster for you. So we're going to do an expression that's percent in for the word number. And then we're going to start at the number one. And then we're going to go up from there. And we're going to end it. So in one plus plus percent at the end, though that expression creates a increasing number and in infinitely basically. Um, this little tester down here is a really good way to make sure that you didn't mess up anything with your jigs when you are writing with expressions. Um, I use it all the time. So after we've got our profile name set up, we're going to go ahead and go over to our billing profile. And we are going to set up a jig so that everything has a different piece of info and none of our addresses look the same. Um, for the first name and the last name, you can use an expression that does just that. Um, it creates a first name and a last name. Um, I usually use this one, um, percent var dot f name equals f name percent. And what that does is that creates a first name but it also creates a variable which makes that first name able to be used later on in the jig in the email and on other spots for the name. Um, I usually do that for both the first name and the last name. So those jigs again are percent var dot f name or l name equals f name or l name. And then now we've got a random first name and last name. And if we test it, it will keep it the same because they are a variable that's going to be called on later. Um, if you were to just type, say, F name, you'll notice that in the tester that the first name changes, but the last name, because we secured it as a variable, stays the same. And you can swap it and do it vice versa as well. Um, in the email, because we made a variable, now we can actually call on that first name with percent F name percent and then the last name with percent L name percent and then we can actually use percent N three percent to create three random numbers that'll follow up those first name and last name. So it'll create a massive amount of different variables um with this whole expression you can put your catch-all at the end of it 
and then all of the gen email addresses will be able to be different and it can go on for forever um so after you set this up with the first name and last name and then the email address with the same first name and last name and then three random numbers you can go ahead and move on to the phone number um in this one we're going to use a new expression we're going to use percent c which for character like letters and then we're going to do 737 and 512 in percent and what these are these are my area codes and this expression tells AYCD to alternate between those if I added another number it would alternate between those three so you can add a list of variables by adding a comma and then something else and you can make that as many as you want um, it doesn't have to be just letters I mean just numbers it can be letters as well um, after you've created your first area code you want to go ahead and call in another number um, this time you want to use a number between one and nine and the reason for that is most phone numbers after the area code do not ever start with zero so you don't want to just say one random number because AYCD will use zero as a random number um, so you're calling on it to just use a number one through nine instead of a number zero through nine um, and then after that since we've made four digits so far we need the last six digits of the phone number so we're going to do another n and then we'll do six and then percent and so this is a completed phone number that will change with every single profile that is created um again super useful super handy um on the address some people can have success jigging an address like this with letters in front um some people have success jigging just the street indicator misspelled or with a shortened code or with the whole thing spelled out with the unit in the first line and the unit in the second line um, there's different ways of jigging um, I'm going to show you how to jig so that it basically prints off the first line and a second line modifier um, that seems to be the most commonly um, accepted for most retail sites as of right now. So on this one, we'll say that your address is 123 Main Street. So we've got your base address, and we're going to go ahead and take off street because Main, you can't really spell any other ways, and you might have, like, Main, but it could be another street in your town with that name or it could just get lost so i would try to keep the main street spelling the same um, but after that you can go ahead and create the same way that you did with the zip codes you can actually or with the uh, area codes rather you can actually call on a character and you can put out a word so we can put the word street and then comma and then we're going to give it another option with S-T-R-T. And then a comma. And another option with S-T. And another comma. And then another option with S-T-R-E-E. -E. So we just created four different options for it to choose from. So now down here, when it goes through and it's spelling them, it will spell them between those four that, options that you had given it. Um, it's super useful, um, especially if you have a um, address that has multiple um, different spellings, or you can use street and drive and lane on your address. Um, as long as in Google, it will show you your address when you type in your jig, usually it's good by postal standards.
Um, you can also use USPS's um, postal verifier, and I think that UPS has one as well. But basically now, since we have Main Street, we can go ahead and jig our secondary unit jig. Um, if you live in an apartment, it's a little bit harder. You have to get creative with the words that you use for apartment. So you can spell apartment out or you can shorten it. Um, you could also use the word door or the word suite. Um, really, you can use anything. Um, if you're in a house, you can also use any of these. You just would be able to use any letter or number after. If you're in an apartment, definitely use your your number and letter indicator. But to do this, we would want to start off with another percent C so that we're telling it we want to use some characters. And then we'll start typing out anything we can think of that you could call a secondary unit. Um, so apartment spelled out, APT, um, we'll say unit, um, side, you could say door, you could say um, suite spelled out, or S-T-E as the short code. Um, you could say um, congrats. And then you could say um, bungalow. Really, you can get super creative with what you're going to call it. And then um, after you've decided on all the different names for what you can call the secondary unit indicator, you can go ahead and finish it off with a percent sign and it'll tell you to, um, it'll tell it to use all of those different options. And then we'll create a space. If you're in an apartment that has a unit, this part doesn't apply. Um, if you're in a house, you can basically jig whatever you want as far as a number and letter combo by using percent in and we'll say two percent and then we'll say another percent and we'll call on a letter and we'll use two letters in percent um you could do something like that and what that would give you is a random set of numbers and letters um you could also do it if you wanted it to look a little bit cleaner. You could do it so that you have characters, and then you'll say, I want the letter A, the letter B, the letter C, the letter D, the letter E, the letter F, and then I want A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, F, F. And then you can in that out, and then you could say that I also want to use a number that's three digits. And everything as far as expression should be lowercase. But um, So now what it'll do is it'll use a random modifier and a random letter and a number. Um, you can get really creative with it. Um, really, it goes as far as your postal service will deliver to your doorstep will take you um but yeah just check your jigs make sure that everything that you want to include um or that you possibly could think of is there um it helps the more variation that you have so the more that you can add of these the better um it doesn't hurt to make like a list of them and just basically feed off of that. Um, after that, you want, definitely want to keep your postal code the same, um, your city, state, all of that. Um, over here, I always click these three and make them true. And what that's doing is it's filling in the shipping with whatever is in the billing. And then it's also only checking out for this profile once if the bot accepts that um, from the AYCD format. And then it's also matching the name on the card and the billing address. Um, so that just makes everything the same across the billing, shipping, and the payment. It makes everything nice and tidy. Again, there's quite a few different expressions that you can use. Um, I didn't 
use every single one of them. I did use most of them. But if you play with your secondary unit jig and with your street name modifier, you definitely will have a lot of success in creating a lot of different jigs. Um, after you've done all of this, you'll want to go ahead and select how many jigs you want to make. We'll say a thousand. And then when you click save, it should print off a thousand different profiles. And so now we've got a thousand different jigs that all have a different address, a different name, a different email, and a different phone number. Um, there's really no issues that I've ever seen with it creating duplicates. Um, if you start creating too, too many um, jigs at once, it definitely will bog it down. Um, but yeah, there's a thousand and one. It'll leave this test profile. Um, if you would like, you can also move those jigs. And we'll say that we were making these for Walmart. Um, we can go ahead and move them. And we'll move them into a test um, Walmart folder. And so now, in test Walmart, we have a thousand jigs that are all unique. So now if I need a hundred addresses for a site, I just can go in here. And now we'll say that I need to move these hundred because I want to move them for... Um, a PlayStation. So now we've got a hundred profiles in PlayStation that are unique. And from there you would go ahead and use the card generation and adding the cards. But that's pretty much the gist of jigging. I'll be sure to include my jig cheat sheet that I have. Um, it's got a lot of what I use personally, and it's also got examples of all of what I just did. Um, if there's any questions about it, you can refer to this example area, and you can actually plug these into AYCD, and it'll show you what exactly each expression does. And also underneath, I showed you in AYCD what it would print out with each expression. Um, hope this was useful. And if it seems to be uh, missing anything, let me know and I'll be sure to uh, include it in future videos.